So, um, so we were looking at uh, some important aspects of planning and uh, some very practical aspects, just to you know have a proper mindset when it comes to planning, so that we, so that we don't feel guilty, and we also don't shirk, uh, you know, our this aspect of our spiritual life, right? Which is to plan, so we don't have to feel guilty about it we don't have to just you know have to get that responsibility and saying okay maybe it's not necessity well it is right so we can do it joyfully we can do it um you know with the assurance that uh, yes this is in fact as a person as a child who's created in the image of a father god um, this is a characteristic that my father has and this is something that I'm, I'm following his footsteps by doing this right so there's a right and wrong way to do and that's why we are looking at these guidelines and uh, as you can see it's all uh, based on scriptural principles that is to acknowledge who he is to be led by the spirit of god and and so on right so we looked at uh, the last one we looked at was um, that we dare to dream that we dare, which means that uh, you know, think out of the box, maybe think creatively, think big, go beyond uh, what we are normally used to, right? And um, and the thing is, uh, you know, we are we could be limited because of our human experience, right? We could be limited in our wanting to dream, in our wanting in in wanting to do things. Uh, not just you know like a selfish ambition, but really for the kingdom of God. Uh, and maybe God has put a very certain strong desire to to create, to build. And these are all things that uh, you know we have. You know the 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 these are all the possibilities, or these are all the abilities that God has put in us. The Lord has put in us right to, to think uh, creatively, to imagine, and uh, to you know to do those things. So. Uh, dare to do that. What really uh, kind of destroys that is, uh, you know, when we don't, uh, when we are, our identity is not rooted in Christ, right? When our self-image is rooted in something else, then we find that uh, we're not able to, right? Even much as Scripture exhorts, and we see this, but we are not able to, you know? and we go back. To a reference point, which could be a human experience, which could be maybe something that we you know, we were hurt and we were you know we we go back to that and maybe we tried and failed and and that's big in us rather than uh, you know the the our identity right this is who we are you know I remember the first time I actually. Um, uh, I was in that stage of life when you're conscious of your, you know, your image, you're conscious of your physical, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know how you look, uh, uh, etc. You know, I think it was just a pre-teens kind of a thing, and uh, and my voice had not broken yet. You know, it was still, um, yeah, that kind of a stage. So I enrolled in a music competition. I was, I was never confident to do it, but I enrolled in a music competition. And I, I don't know if I shared the story. Please forgive me if I'm just repeating it. So when I enrolled for a music competition, then I went and uh, yeah, I practiced. It was a Michael Jackson song. Okay, so this is, I'm saying I'm saying this could be class class. Uh, I don't know, maybe four or five or uh, uh, maybe five or six. Okay, so um, uh, so it was a Michael Jackson song that I had heard, uh, like a ballad. So I I learned it. And uh, the only problem was that I, you know, I learned it on a guitar that I had at home. And so I learned it and I had to sing in the competition. I came to school, it was on a different guitar, which was tuned way higher than the, the guitar at home, my guitar at home. So uh, I played that chord and something was off. Oh. Okay, I just went about singing it, and uh, I I could sing it only in one particular, you know, I, let's say C scale. You know, I could just sing it in that. So I started singing in that, and it was so high. Okay, it was so high. My voice sounded so squeaky, and um, and uh, so I just wanted to go and hide uh, halfway through the song, but I had to finish the song. So I finished it, and and uh, I came back. Uh, and I saw, you know, I finished, and people were polite. A few of them clapped. I think everybody was like, "What is this?" And uh, and then it was in front of the whole school, right? Everybody sitting and uh, listening. 
and then um, and then my uh, my friend my desk mate so he he said hey what da? you sounded like a girl <laughs> and so you may, you may imagine right you finish and you come and immediately this is the first thing i hear you sounded like a girl and uh, you know being a boy that age it was, it was like the most insulting thing that i could hear um so i was like completely you know and i just gave up singing i, I remember i stopped going for you know music class. i just gave some excuse or the other i didn't want to be part of the choir i just i just said i don't i don't want this at all right for many years i i remember for many years i just shy away uh, no you know nothing in public i would not you know um so you know literally that was my reference point right whenever there was a you know opportunity to sing opportunity to perform or some competition this was my reference point oh man i sounded like a girl now i'm not going to do it right so it took many years to come out of that <clears throat> and literally i think from then on till maybe when i was the 11th standard kick okay, is when i kind of you know again went back to uh, you know try out and sing and all that so it it took you know a gap of many years but uh, of course i did other things rather than singing or being in the choir so i'm just saying that our reference point for this whole thing of being free and liberated to dream big our reference point could be a you know an event right we go back and we say okay this is the thing so we restrict ourselves we don't go beyond that event right that seems to just dictate everything okay this is what you did this is what happened you cannot you can never go beyond that so we go back to it okay this is what you tried you tried praying for healing okay i'm just looking giving some ministry example you tried praying for healing for this person that person it was in front of you know, you know a whole lot of people nothing happened uh, that's the reference point you know we did organize this meeting organized did this uh no one came you know maybe two people came okay this is the reference point you know we always default back to uh you know if if uh we not careful we default back to that reference and then we we say uh and then that's it you know i will not go beyond it yeah isaac you have a question go ahead um go ahead please ask if you have a question or have you put anything on the chat yeah, nothing um uh we can't hear you isaac so uh, it's a mistake i don't have a question for now <laughs> oh i see okay okay so sorry okay right okay let's continue then okay so so the, so that's the thing you know we don't def so when we see that okay this is scripture that he is able Right, he is able. He is bigger than that event that we are defaulting to. He is bigger than those things, those experiences. Well, it happened for a number of reasons. Maybe you know whatever reasons X, Y, Z. But he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask. So let's not be afraid to dream. Maybe we are hurt. Maybe ask. You know, sometimes the spirit, the spirit is crushed, uh, traumatized, maybe, maybe because of you know, previous abuse and so on. So we are not in a place to dream. We're just surviving, right? Doing the safe things, the surviving, right? So don't be afraid to dream, right? He is able to do. And uh, of course, we need to not just dream and have those big pictures or big ideas, but we need to practically. Um, execute them. Okay, so let's look at the next one. You know, it says be realistic and be practical in a sense. It seems almost like a like a paradoxical thing, you know, opposite, contradicting the fact. If I can dream, then why should I be practical and realistic? Well, the reason is this: we can have those big ideas and big pictures, but we it also needs to be tempered by you know what do I need to do now. What do I need to do next? What do I need to? How do? What do I need to um, accomplish? So in the dreaming, it should not be. Uh, you know, there's a uh, there's a thing, right? We we can be escapist in our dreaming. Like you know, I can, like, for example, I can just say, okay, I I just want to go and live in New Zealand. Why? I just can't, you know, 
uh, I just, I, I, this traffic is too much, the pollution is too much. Uh, I just want to get away from it all, have a fresh start in New Zealand, where it's all, where I've seen those pictures, I've seen those video, videos, oh, it's, it's beautiful, no people for miles together, you know. The, the, now that's, a, that's again dreaming, it's again dreaming big, it's uprooting of everything and, you know, shifting and starting all over again, but it's it's not considering you know the plan and purpose it's not considering the uh, the season of life right it's more like an escape plan from the situation it's more like i'm just retreating it's, even though it looks like okay i'm doing something exciting it's it's more like retreating right so that is what we mean you know be realistic be practical Ephesians 5 and verse 15, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Walk circumspectly. Think, uh, where am I putting my feet? Which path am I on? Walk circum circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. You know, well, you know, it's it, again, if you look at that idea, how can I redeem the time? How can I take back? Right. One, once the clock moves, once the you know, seconds tick away, you know, can I just pour it back in into a container? But the idea is this: when I live circumspectly, you know, it's as if time is even short, and that I'm able to do the things in a short span of time. What would have required maybe days? I'm able to do those things, you know, within that thing. So uh, I'm redeeming. The time, right? Uh, the timeline is taking it back, it's, it's so to speak. Right? Um, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Okay, so again, as uh, children of God, we have the ability to hear the voice of the shepherd. We need to make that time and space to do it. And God is more than willing to reveal the plans and purposes. Well, sometimes he gives us the big picture, sometimes he gives us, you know, years in advance, um, things what what would happen in uh, you know years in advance he reveals to us. Um, and so uh, we can like lean into him and uh, sharpen our spiritual capability, you know, throw away whatever is hindering, blocking us from hearing. Like, what is unblocking? What is you know clouding that you know, this whole perspective of God, am I doing something? Have I allowed something to come into my life? Have I, you know, um, is my heart uh, captured with something else, right? Uh, which is taking priority and I'm not able to hear the voice of God clearly. Well, let me do away those things so that I can hear Him clearly. And uh, so I can understand what the will of the Lord is. Uh, because we know the will of the Lord is not a mathematical formula but it's a relationship. You know, it's a walk with him. It's very practical. It's something that is doable. And it's not something which is fuzzy and unclear. It's a relationship. So we walk with him. Right? Okay. Um, let's we'll take some questions after we do this next section. Okay. So some practical tips when making planning and setting goals. Okay. Start with what you have. Whatever it is, maybe it is resources, maybe it is things. What what do we have? Consider that. Well, the Lord Jesus asked, you know, what do you have? Uh, this is what we have. So, so many fish, so many loaves. He said, bring them to me. Start with what you have. The next one. When we understand the time, schedule, responsibility, season, don't take on more than what you can handle. You know, if it is going to be uh, something that's uh, that causes compromise on especially the core responsibilities, right? It's causing you to compromise on core responsibilities. I'm supposed to know this is something that God is interested, in, but I'm unable to do it because I'm, you know, taking on more of something else, right? Do not do that, right? Um, though you, even though it might seem like it might come from a you know, great place, I need to do the same, the, you know, the, the the lost must be saved, the sick must be healed, and the dead must be raised up. And so, you know, I'm going to take on more and more and more. Well, are the other areas suffering? Right. So that's something that we don't think of. You no, know, we need to. Right? That because who entrusted that to us? 
well as the Lord Himself, right? So uh, in this season, okay, this is this is what I'm going to do. Well, it, it might change. It will definitely change, right? Um, as we progress, as we as we continue in our journey, that will definitely change. But but this season, I'm going to do this, right? And I, and I remember, you know, uh, even when early days of ministry, uh, when um, well, well, I I knew well practically nothing about ministry. I just stepped in from you know working in a uh, in corporate sales and and uh, so I, I I was observing and seeing what was thing happening and so uh, Pastor Ashish would uh, was running the software business and he was doing ministry. Time was very very you know there's 24 hours and there's a lot of things to be done. Um, so it was he would never. You know, he would steward that very, very well. And he also understood that the season of life he was in, the stage of growth the church was in and the ministry was in. So he would not go beyond that, just focus on building a strong foundation, right? There's no touring, uh, no, you know, no touring in the sense, okay, he might take on one or two, um, you know, outside of Bangalore, one or two assignments, speaking assignments. Uh, but it was all, Focusing on the foundation, you know, you know, knew that this had to be priority. This had to be done. Focusing on raising leaders, all that was happening in those years. So um, there came a stage when, yes, uh, it, was, it was time to, you know, expand and move and uh, you know to be the voice in the nation and, and do all that. And uh, God was opening up uh, territory and. Um, um, and it came in the fame, you know, the form of opportunities and invitations, and then, you know, uh, that happened. So, so the thing is that, um, well, understand that, right? understand the stage, understand the growth phase, and do it. So, in that sense, that is the context when we say, okay, do not take on more than what you can handle, right? Okay, uh, then gather information about the task at hand. Uh, Proverbs thirteen sixteen. Every prudent man acts with knowledge, but a fool lays open his folly. So, uh, when we are planning, okay, there is information available that we can research and find out. And even when we are making purchases, you know, let's say you are purchasing something, buying something online, you you check, you know, if it's something of significant expense or value, uh, value not not value really expense. You you check, see whether it suits. Um, read the reviews to see whether it's okay. You know, we do all that, right? So gather information about the task at hand. Okay, how much uh, time will it require? Uh, you know, uh, how much uh, manpower will it require? And 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 on. So, we, uh, what expertise is required? What skill is required? What tools are required? Right? And then plan. So, about the task at hand. The next thing is that yes, information we will we will be able to gather information about the task at hand, but we will not be able to know everything, all details, okay, because there will be a limit. But plan according to what is what information is available and what we do know. Okay, uh, Proverbs twenty twenty four: uh, the man's steps are of the Lord. How then can a man understand his own way? Right. Uh, well, so, uh, we can gather information, but we may not know everything. We may not. There is someone who knows everything, who has infinite knowledge and understanding, and we are finite. Right. So uh, there is a limit. No problem. Right. But plan according to what we do know. The information that we do have, plan according to that. Okay. The fifth one is: don't be in a hurry. Okay. Take things. A step at a time. Don't be in a hurry. Proverbs 21, verse 5. The plans of the diligent surely lead to plenty. Okay, who's a diligent one? One who is, uh, you know, one who is industrious, one who is not complacent, one who's uh, willing to put in the hard work, one who is thinking and, you know, planning. But to those of everyone who is hasty, surely to poverty. So one is uh, not planning diligently. But suppose one is in a hurry and hasty, and you know it leads to poverty. So, so why do we? Why are we? Why do we? You know, come to that place of place of being hasty, right? Maybe we realize, oh, there's things to be done, and I've not done it, right? Then we have to hurry. We are we are hasty. We are in haste, so we don't consider the outcome. We don't consider the 
the information at hand and we make a hasty plan and a hasty decision right get in a hurry so we don't consider all that uh, sometimes we are hasty because that is oh well it looks like something that is good and we are excited and we don't look at the all the other possibilities we don't weigh the possibilities we don't weigh the options right so uh, we could avoid uh, being hasty we should avoid being hasty and not being in a hurry know our priorities this again uh, when we consider other things that what is god interested what does god want me to do what are my core responsibilities right now in this season uh, maybe in uh, you know uh, the role that you are in um, the maybe it could be informal leadership role it could be a formal leadership role um, you know like i'm saying you know it's uh, it could be as a homemaker it could be as a working professional it could be as a you know as a pastor teacher whatever um, know our priorities we need to know our priorities when we are planning right proverbs 24/7 prepare your outside work make it fit for yourself in the field prepare your outside work and afterward build your house so he's talking about uh, you know the priority like we were looking at the example of cleaning a particular place again priority what is it that goes first do that first thing in order so that the second thing can follow okay but other simple things write it down or you know capture it in a document um, document the plan it's good to do that we, we don't remember everything we, we cannot humanly remember all the details so document it document it also helps us to share with others so we need to communicate if there are others who are involved in the plan now if there's a team and you are you are leading that particular initiative project well everyone needs to know right you cannot be sharing it at each and every step uh, and then we finish the first step and then you share no uh, each one needs to know yes we can remind them of each and every phase each and every step but uh, each and I mean, everyone needs to know everyone who's involved everyone who's required to do their thing needs to know what the plan is right okay so any questions while we look at uh, some more things guidelines to planning any questions um, till here you can even um, like share some experiences some challenges any questions at all yes yes can i ask yeah sure is it yes there are, you're thinking about planning or desires and uh, according to your explanation which is true that we should lean on we should not lean on our own understanding so yeah. we need to we need to plan with god mm. but there are certain times in life we desire things maybe it's not actually the will of god but sometimes god allows that to happen like mm. um, i remember in the story of israel under samuel mm -hmm. israel asked for a king like any other nation expressly it was not the desire of god at that time for them and samuel knew but god right. said allow them to deny you they are denying me why did he allow them though mm -hmm. it was not his will at that time yeah so the thing is it was the people's desire right this is what uh, if, you, if you read through that portion you see that this is what people were craving because all the other nations were having um, those uh, people who were uh, i mean human rulers so even though god said that i will lead you um so people asked for a leader people asked for a ruler and then he he just said okay right so the thing is this we also have uh, free will and uh, god respects that you know our choices our actions well he he does orchestrate things he does speak to us warn us in advance um to tell us what is best for us but beyond that he it's just that you know he just opens up and says okay okay if this is what your heart is bent on uh i warned you i've guided you but 
uh, is it you know because uh, i forget the reference but we see that yes god gave them the desires of their heart but uh, also along with this they had the leanness of the soul you know this, because this is not uh, what he wanted for them but he gave them the desires of the heart and along with this the scripture says that the leanness of the soul so yes so that is a that is a thing you know when our heart is bent on something irrespective of what uh, we're not considering what god desires then well god is not going to just force you to do it then he'll just allow because this is what you want yeah Okay, thank you, Pastor. Right. Because like you actually said, uh, he, he told Samuel, he said, tell them, advise them, this will be the ways of the king. But mm. if that is their desire, okay. <laughs> thank you. Right, right. Okay. Right. Okay, so... Um, so this is uh, you know part and parcel of leadership so let's get comfortable with that you know um, and maybe some of us are skilled at uh, doing it it's part of our routine and things like that but uh, you know if not but then we need to you know renew our mind to this right make that shift alignment okay so some more um, guidelines here on planning uh receive god godly counsel you know have people speak into our life bounce your ideas with people who have already been there done that um, no harm in receiving counsel but also be discerning right we can we can learn lessons uh, how to do how not to do certain things from the experience of people and how they've lived their lives um, but at the same time uh, be discerning as well right um, so um, proverbs 11 and verse 14 where there is no counsel the people fall but in the multitude of counselors there is safety right so uh, godly counsel god uh, uses people to bring it to our hearts and uh, let's be um, humble enough to receive it right? at the same time uh, lean in again to the voice of the spirit and say okay god um you know is this something that you want me to do okay um Proverbs 19 and verse 20, listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in your latter days. Yeah. Proverbs 20, 18, plans are established by counsel, by wise counsel wage war. So uh, godly counsel, you know, God might bring it in ways. There could be even surprises. Who brings that counsel? Whom God uses? Um, but if we are sensitive, uh, then we would receive it, right? So uh, sometimes our own pride disallows us from receiving the, that counsel, you know, um, because it's it's through someone whom we maybe we don't consider as skilled or experienced, but they have, you know, God has spoken and they bring that wise counsel, and sometimes that's the game changer, right? So let's be um, aware of that. Okay, seventh thing is be open to change, revise your plans, learn to. Wait. Um, that verse that we read, commit to your plans, works to the Lord, and your thoughts will be established. Verse 9 of that same chapter, Proverbs 16, a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his step. Okay, so uh, we, we plan, but then the Lord directs. Okay, um, and so we can plan, set goals, uh, but be open to change. Let it not be so watertight that, uh, you know, there's no scope for change should the lord revise should the lord do something um you know be aware and uh, be uh, free to flow right in that okay um okay times of waiting again um i just mentioned that um there could be well there's a reason well certain things you know we've done all our we've done our part you know, there's nothing that is wrong from our side. We've done our part, and uh, there seems to be a delay in, th in things happening, right? Uh, well, God is doing something. Definitely, He's orchestrating things, people, places, He's putting things in place. So be assured you know, when you know in your heart that you are in the right place, when you're doing the right thing, 
and uh, you know you you've done your best in planning and everything there doesn't seem to because god is well able to point to us show us okay this is something that's left undone this is left undone you know so that's things are not moving um but you need to know in your heart your conscience is clear well things have been done so um so well, things are still you know in that place of waiting no problem right be open to that and say okay god you got a reason to tell me okay i'm not going to be discouraged i will wait okay then the, the important thing is this you know when we plan yes it's important to plan but we also need to implement the plan right meaning act on it execute the plan work the plan right um proverbs 12 and verse 11 he who tills the land will be satisfied with bread but he who follows frivolity is devoid of understanding so the tilling of the land is the actual work right so tilling is not sowing tilling is not watering it's much before that it's the the first stage to prepare the land it's like a plowing preparing the land for sowing preparing the land for the the last stage is the harvest and then processing the harvest and it becomes bread right but it starts with this but uh, maybe we're thinking okay i need to these are the steps this season this time frame you know on this day tilling on this day sowing and this month you know uh, and and then after that the watering we could plan everything but unless we put a hand to the plow and actually do it right it doesn't start right so we need to work we need to implement verse 27 you know that same chapter the lazy man does not roast what he took in hunting but diligence is man's precious possession so um, even whatever is ours actually whatever has come into our possession right maybe we worked for it you know see, see hunting is work right gone and you, maybe you've gone and hunted okay now you've gone and bought right it's it's like that it has to be stored properly so that it doesn't get spoiled and it has to be used right so one who is complacent or lazy does not roast what he took in hunting he did part of it the other part of it is left undone okay so plan the work execute the plan right um so many examples that we see scriptures that we see proverbs 20 and verse 4 the, the lazy man would not plow plow sorry because of winter because of the external circumstance now well well it's true that it's not harvest but in order for the field to reach the harvest stage there has to be the plowing which happens in winter or plowing which happens much earlier than that okay so um plan and execute the plan okay so do not let the present circumstances or present activities keep you from what you should be actually doing and an important thing to understand it's not you know sometimes busyness uh, becomes a becomes a barrier for us to actually achieve our goals we are busy we are busy doing this busy doing that but are we actually busy doing what we should be doing you know that's the question right are we busy doing because in busyness we can be satisfied oh, wow man today was a busy day uh whole day nine to five and even beyond i was busy i was busy doing this i was busy doing that and there was we did not actually it didn't seem like a waste of time really because we were totally engaged doing this and that and the other but the thing is to take a step back and ask ourselves was i busy doing what i should be doing were my core tasks 
or core responsibilities. You know, this busyness and what I did, and this flurry of activity, did it actually contribute to that? If not, then I, yes, I've been engaged, right? That time frame, but it didn't really enable me to execute the plan to reach towards the goal. So, need to reevaluate and say, okay, these things, well, these activities are good. Maybe I need to do it, but then I need to do it on a later day. I need to do it uh, only on certain days. So we need to uh, reprioritize those. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, another aspect um, on those lines, which is organizing. Okay, organizing. So organizing, similar to planning, it means to arrange something. It means to arrange something in a systematic and orderly manner. Okay, so we're looking at ministry. We're looking at uh, church, maybe. Uh, we we see that. Every ministry has spiritual responsibilities, right? If you're looking at uh, the ministry of worship, if you look at ministry of, you know, whatever you look at, it has the spiritual responsibilities of, you know, being in prayer, being in personal worship, um, being led by the Spirit of God, preparing our hearts to hear from God uh, and the direction that He wants to lead you know, for. If you're a worship minister, you know the direction that He wants. Um, the church to take when it comes to worship um, for that particular day, for that particular meeting, right? So there's a spiritual responsibility of the worship minister investing time to do that, praying, feeding on the word of God, um, meditating on his word, listening to the voice of the spirit, um, receiving a prophetic word, a prophetic song, all those things. But there are also the administrative responsibilities. The administrative responsibilities could be, well, preparing the song list, preparing the key for each of the songs, making sure it is okay for you to, and the others to sing it out, um, ensuring that the song list is sent well in advance, communicate, okay, this is the plan to each and every member of the team, making sure that the song list is sent to, and the words are sent to the the media team, you know, I'm just talking about a, like a contemporary church in today's world, um, to so send that the words of the song and the and the uh, song list to the media team, so that they get things ready. And nowadays, you know, you also have the 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 crew, the the camera crew, because maybe we are maybe the church is streaming, um, you know, recording streaming it live so the camera ne person needs to know also where to focus right um, there could be multiple cameras if it's one camera it's fine but there could be multiple cameras um, and even if it's a single camera okay this person is singing the song this is how the song starts this person is going to be playing the drummer is going to be playing first so if the drummer is playing the beginning of the song just the drummer only and if the cameraman is focusing on someone else who's not doing anything, well, you know, that's bad planning again, right? So that's, so uh, it doesn't really enrich uh, the viewing experience. So you need to be where uh, the action is. So, okay, this is what, so they also need to know and they will not know unless the worship leader, one who's, prepared the songs, you know, he he knows musically what is happening, he or she knows what is happening musically, so that also needs to be communicated. So, you know, you see that there are these spiritual responsibilities and there are these administrative responsibilities and both need to run hand in hand. Well, we might say, okay, I'm excited about the spiritual responsibilities, but these administrative responsibilities, I'm not you know, I'm not too keen on, and I don't want to, you know, uh, I I think these are less important. No, because it's going to influence that spiritual responsibility. You know, people need the words to sing. And how can you expect them all to join in singing in one heart and one mind if, let's say, if it's a song where, you know, the words are not put up? And how can, you know, how can they sing if the 
the whatever tools or devices that you require to present the song, maybe the the laptop or the projector, you know, is not in place. They are not prepared. So you see the tech side of it, right? The administrative side of it, right from the venue, the chairs, the space, everything. These are administrative responsibilities, and these have a tendency to either influence. Um, or hinder or enhance or hinder the spiritual work. So both are important, right? One cannot do um, without the other one. It needs to go hand in hand, right? So to be organized as a ministry is to make sure that this, make sure that we, you know, arrange things in a systematic, orderly manner so that the spiritual ministry does not get hindered. There's no barrier to it. There's no blockage of that. It happens smoothly. You know, every time the mic is switched on, if there's going to be one, one you know, that squeak, that high frequency, uh, you know, sound, it's going to be very, very disturbing. Right? Very disturbing. And I remember in a, in a church where we used to worship earlier, you know, we had this person, uh, we used to call him Mike Danny. So he was in charge of the sound. He used to stand near the amp and the you know the mixer and everything. So, you know, he, obviously he needed help. He was not uh, fully aware of those things. But he was the person who was responsible and he was there, was available every meeting he was there. But we called him Mike Danny and these, these, you know, Mike's would always, there would be some issue or the other. Right? There will be this, uh, there will be this uh, high pitch thing, and everybody will look at him, and he will be like trying to fix it. Nothing would happen, and all that. So it really was kind of a barrier, it was a disturbance, um, you know, for the service. Right. So we understand that. So we need to organize so that the spiritual activity, the spiritual responsibilities, are carried out. You know, uh, best the best way possible. Okay, so here are broad categories that we could get organized in. Now, we're talking about ministry, we're talking about church and ministry, but it also is applicable, you know, if you can, you can actually apply it to personal things. We can actually apply it to um, our things at home, right? So if it comes to ministry, okay, organizing church, ministry, organizing people, organizing schedule, organizing finances okay so so these are some broad categories if you're looking at your your personal life also it could be you know there could be broad categories okay i'm gonna be organizing finances organizing my you know what i'm supposed to be wearing uh where i you know organizing my okay food and kitchen and cooking so you know there, there are these things that we can actually look at right so organizing church and ministry Okay, so for church and ministry to be organized and to be effectively flowing. Now, what we're looking at, you know, we will study it in great detail in uh, the church administration, right? So this is just an example. Right? So uh, one way to organize this to be better functioning is to do it in the um, basis of who is our target audience and how what are we doing as a church and ministry, right? The, the people whom we are reaching the people group whom we are reaching so that way the ministries can be organized okay so what are the ministries within the church for the people in the church right who, who attend okay so based on understanding of the people the needs and the ministry outside of church right so outreach evangelism and beyond the immediate uh, locality, we could call it mission. So um, we organize things in that way, so that way we can plan. Okay, what are what do I plan plan for internally? Now, obviously, certain things that we do for you know people in the local church, we cannot extend it. Extend the same thing to let's say missions. Right, the priorities are different. So therefore, the kind of activities that we need to do, it could be. Um, it could be focusing on certain things alone. 
we may not be extend right we we, we we won't send birthday cards to people who are you know whom we are reaching out in missions it is for those who are part of this church community and so on so um, so that you know so simply put that's this will be this will really help uh, what is the outreach what are the uh, you know missions uh, activities what are things that are within the church so organizing church and ministry second thing is organizing people so we we realize that uh, ministry does not happen in vacuum right? it happens with people to people right that's how God works. So God says in 1 Corinthians, we see Paul saying, you, know, you are God's building. You are God's field. Right? And who's he addressing? He's addressing the Corinthian church. You are God's building. You are God's field. So people. And he also, you know, he's talking about, he talks about his team. He's talking to them. He's saying, you know, we were, you know, what manner of life we lived, how we conducted ourselves, right? And so there is the people who ministered and the people whom they were ministered to. So people right, are there, part and parcel of the ministry. So that needs to be organized as well. And right? if it's a ministry team, okay, leaders, ministry leaders, um, they need to be appointed for specific areas of ministry. Maybe there is a marriage enrichment ministry. Maybe there's a life group ministry. Maybe there's publications, uh, books, there's worship, and so on. So who are these leaders, right? appointing leaders? So that's, that's organizing the ministry because it cannot run randomly. So we need to appoint leaders. Okay, this person is fit. This person has journeyed on with church. And of course, you know, we'll look into the details in church administration. But then, of course, just saying that, yes, there needs to be ministry leaders. Okay, so within the ministry, there could be various teams, and um, that also each team. Like, let's say, for example, if you take a church location, maybe it has an associate pastor, and it would have various teams like ushering team, worship team, visit uh, welcoming team, uh, the media presentation team. So all these teams need to have functional leaders. So team leaders, right? And uh, in these teams. There are people who are serving um, to ensure that all these activities happen uh, at the right time, happen well. So there are volunteers. Now they are not staff. Um, they are volunteers, which means they are they are volunteering their time, volunteering their all the efforts and resources uh, to be part of this team to do these tasks. Right. So so then. We need to have a process in place, series of steps in place to give opportunities for people, like to actually advertise or to announce that here are opportunities. You're, you're in church. Here are opportunities for you to be plugged in in order to serve. Right. So we need to organize that aspect as well, organizing people. Okay. Okay. So we'll stop here, and then we'll continue when it comes to organizing our schedule, what are some practical things that we can do? Okay, All right. Okay, so thank you. Um, uh, we'll meet again next class. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor.